So hello and welcome, it is Friday. So it's time again for another DAX Fridays. And in today's video, we're going to continue with the statistical series where I go through one statistical DAX function every Friday. Today's turn is norm im. So I talked about norm this in previous video, uh, you know, last Friday. I will post all the links below, don't worry, where we actually calculated the probability of a score to happen on the data set. So what norm im does is the exact opposite, and this is basically what we will do today. In basic English, what we're going to do is if Kevin Durant, which is a basketball player, has his best match ever, that means that his scores lies on the 10%, top 10%, what well, those scores should be, what to, we expect for scores. And the same we will calculate it. If he would have the worst day ever, what scores should we expect? Okay? So all of that in just a second. So in previous DAX Fridays, I actually show you how to use norm dist, which is basically a function that allows you to calculate the probability that a value will occur in your data set. In this case, we have Kevin Durant scores for the matches in 2017, and we're basically predicting the probability that we'll, we'll score a specific thing. Now, norm imp is basically the opposite of what norm dist does. So you have a probability and it will tell you the scores. Well, norm dist, you have the scores and it will tell you the probability that will happen. So you're just basically inverting everything. And again, what we're going to do in this video, we're going to calculate the range of scores that Kevin Durant would have if he would perform at its worst, which is, you know, 10% of this, you know, the worst 10% of the scores, or if it performs at its best, that would be top 10% scores, okay? So if he plays at his best or at his worst, what range of scores or points should we expect from him? And you do that using norm im. So let me show you here. We are, you see here the scores that we have for Kevin Duran, and this is basically a frequency chart. We've calculated how often the point happens. It is in another DAX Fridays, I'll link below so you can go and watch it. We've already calculated the average and the mean. Also on a video, I'll download a link below so you will see what it is. And with that, we are going to predict the range of scores. So let's look at this function. You can see that is not 100% normally distributed, but it's a little bit skewed to the left. But it follows quite a nice shape anyway. If you would look into the average score for Kevin Durant, you will see that it's 34.38. That means that most of the time, Kevin Durant will score that around that value, right? That is the, the value that will come more often. And it is some, somewhere around here. That is 50% of the scores. And we want to know what scores would be if you would perform at its worst. We start there. That would be um, 10%. We said it at that. It could be 15 or 20. You decide what the value is. Let's say that is 10%. So around here is like 25%. And let's pick another color. Let's say that this is our 10% mark. So we want to know which scores we would have in there when he performs at his worst. And when he performs at his best, it would be somewhere in here. So what scores we would expect when he performs top 10% of the scores? Norm im is not going to give us a range, obviously, but we can calculate it ourselves. So how do we do that? First things first, we have a probability score for the worst I put minus 10% is obviously not minus 10% but you know the, the, the worst 10% maybe I should write worst 10% so this is basically what probability we want to get the value for and it is 10%, so it's 0 0.1. The norm imp 
function, dax function. Let's go here, new measure. So it's probability 10% worst scores. We use norm in the, and this is what dax intelligence is telling us. You need to have the probability, which is the 10%. You need to have the mean and the standard deviation. We have both. So let's do it first, and then I will tell you the value that it's actually giving us. So here is probability of a score of worse 10%, and then we have the mean for drawn, and then we have the standard deviation. Stand, standard deviation draw. There we have it. And there is probability 10% scores. And it says 30.86. Well, that is not actually, is this core? I'll show you. So what that is telling us is that the value that falls on the 10% line is 30.86. So it's giving us this value. Okay. So perhaps probability 10% is, is a wrong way to say it. We should probably score at 10% worse. Something like that. You, just so you understand. So it's given us that point. So what we need to do to calculate now the range is we need to have the minimum value and the 10% value. And that will give us the range, basically. So it's easy, right? So we're going to calculate the minimum score. I don't think we have it. I actually don't think we have calculated it yet. So let's calculate it. We go here, new, minimum score drawn, minimum, and then it says you have to give a column name. The column is the points. So we want to have the minimum of all the points available. And there we have it. So basically what we are saying is There were Eve, Kevin, Duran, Blaze at its worst. His scores, his range of scores will be. And I think doing this is actually quite good because people that are not very familiar with statistics, you're actually giving them the facts. They don't have to know statistics. You spell it out for them. This is it. They go in there and you say mean score the run. And then you go like that. And probably you want to have like that. And then you have score. And you will have will be between. And this is title worst. And then we'll make it a little bit smaller. And there you have it. And then we remove that one. So it will be between and you have to you have to fix it up a little bit, right? Because there should be a space there and this should be formatted probably with two decimals, but you can do that. You know how to do it. I've showed you that already. So if given the wrong place at its worst, the range of scores will be between 30 and uh, 30.8. And every time the wrong place and you load new data, 
this text will change and it will be available for everybody to know. Good. Now, what happens if it's placed at its best? So 10% of the scores. What we need to do here is slightly different. If we go in there, when you are calculating or when you are using the norm inv, it's actually giving you always the you know the left part of the distribution. So when you are asking for this part, you have to actually give in the other one. So if this is 10% that you want to know, you have to have the probability of a score of 90%. And that will give you that value. Okay? So what we need to do now is new measure. Scores high top ten percent and then it's zero point nine. Now you know why, right? You wanna have that that part. And uh, you are going to create is the now the calculation is the same is scores top 10%, which is norm, in, and then you have the probability. You can actually write there 0 0.9, obviously. But uh, scores top, not that one. Uh, 10. The scores. Okay, so this is not going to. So, so they cannot be called the same. Mean and standard deviation. Standard deviation, wrong. And then we have it. So 37.90, remember, is not the range, is giving us exactly this point. So plus 90%, it is 37.90. So if we want to know the range of the top scores, then of course, now that we have this point, we have to calculate the max. And that will give us the range. And to calculate the max, you know exactly how to do it. I'll show that before in other videos. But you go here, max score, and it's max. And then is uh, the points, right? The round points. Here we have the max score. We put it as a card. So now the range will be between 40 and 37.90. I really recommend you to do again a title so it is like super clear for those that do not understand the statistics that much and you, you just want to spell it out basically. And here title best that is best perhaps you should say 10% of best scores. His range will be between max score and a score stop percent norm in. And that will give us a text. And there you have the actual label. A little bit smaller. And there you have it. So now you know how to calculate based on the probability the actual value. So exactly the opposite as we did last Friday. Ding. So statistics is a lot of fun, isn't it? I, I am enjoying the series. Hopefully you're enjoying them too. I think so. But uh, yeah, let, let me know as always in the comment box. Before I close the video for today, I just want 
to take a minute of your time if possible. I've been traveling last week and this week, that's why there was no video on Wednesday, and actually on the airport I bought this book. This is the um, Swedish version and it is absolutely gorgeous because it is in color. I mean, it is fantastic. The visualizations here are brilliant. So, here's the thing. I, I haven't read it yet. As you can see, I'm like halfway and I I love reading books. Normally a book this big would take me like a day or two to read, but this book is something else. Because I read like 10 pages and then I think for half an hour and then I read another 10 pages and then I think for half an hour. So it's taken me forever to read it, but it's absolutely fantastic. And there are actually a few stories that have been, that are being told in this book. You have Hans, Hans is the, the author of the book and he has his story where he's been fighting throughout his, at least the, the last part of his life. Uh, to tell us and is how is the world situation right now and that is an amazing uh, story in itself by all means but there are a lot of layers in this book and one of the things I found is for us that work with data and why this book is so relevant is the way that he visualizes the data, the graphs that they've created. It's not only Hans, it's also his son, Ola, and his daughter-in-law that work together to create the visualizations, the stories, and, and they are absolutely brilliant. The, the way that they visualize data is absolutely fantastic. And there's also another layer that I think is relevant for us. There is how he uses data to bring a point home and how he actually develops the story. So it takes you on a journey where you ask yourself questions and he, even without being there with you, answers them with data and graphs. I think it's a fantastic book. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because I would really love to make a video of the book, a review video, and talk about not the actual story, which of course I will talk about because it's what the book's about, but more about how he utilizes data and how, how brilliant their graphs are. So here's the thing, they will pop up a poll in here that he will say, would you like me to do a review of Hans Ruslin's book? And if you don't want me to do it, I will do it anyway, but on my own channel. But I think because this is data-driven book, I, I think it is. it would be really relevant to do it here. But just let me know what you think. I, probably, I don't know, because it's 10 pages, half an hour ratio, it will take me a while. But maybe in a week or two, I have read the book and I can actually do the video. Or perhaps next week, I don't know. Depends on the time I have. But let me know what you think about me doing a review of the book. Um, if you want it, I'll do it here or I'll do it on my own channel. That's fine. So with that said, I'll see you again on Monday. Take care. Bye.